What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 21st of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally see potential in, and that you guys actually asked me to talk about. We're going to be going over those in this video. But before we do, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you do enjoy these videos here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really does help the channel grow, and it supports me in general, and allows me to know that you guys enjoy the content and you want to see more content from me. So let's get right into the topic of today's video. We're going to be talking about these major indices here, the SPX, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. We see we do have about 15 minutes left in the market today, you know, at the time that I am recording this video. But as of right now, 3.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the SPX, the S&P 500 Index, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies, is currently down around $14, down around half a percent here. The Dow Jones is down around $134, down about half a percent as well. And the NASDAQ composite here, guys, is down around 0.6%, down around $45 at the time that I'm recording this video. So, Pretty much, guys, if nothing changes from now to the close of the market, we're going to end up closing the day red today. And if you guys watched my video yesterday, that's pretty much what we ended up, you know, talking about and predicting for today is that we could see potentially a pullback, right? And that's exactly what it's looking like it's going to close at. A pullback, right? We see the resistance here on the SPX. We've been talking about this over the past couple of videos, right at around 2795, 2790, 2785, right around that area is a strong area of resistance from the SPX. We remember in the beginning of December, we sold off very drastically. A lot of panic selling started to kick in. Look at that, guys. The rapid, rapid sell off all the way down to 2300. What this did is, well, that opened up the first resistance that we had to get out of if we wanted to test you know some all-time highs which I don't really know if that's going to end up happening in 2019. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. And of course, the second resistance here at around 28.15 from when we started to sell off in the beginning of November, guys. And we've also been talking about this particular channel that we see here on the 30-day, 90-minute chart. And we've been talking about this, guys. If you've been keeping up with these videos and keeping up with the market yourselves, you've seen this particular channel, right? We see the resistance here and the support. And the fact that we are topping off here, let me quickly just clear this drawing set so we can get a better channel here so we can see um, you know, where we could potentially be headed over these next couple of weeks. But the fact that we are topping off here at the top of this channel you know, this could indicate that there could be more selling to come over these next couple of days, right? And for those of you guys that don't know how to set up a channel drawing, it's very simple. If you're using Thinkorswim by TD Ameritrade, just come up here, this Drawings tab, click that, Drawing Tools, hover over this, and then you'll be able to go to the side panel here, and there's a bunch of different tools that you can use. I typically use this trend line right here, but for channels, you can just go right here and click Channel, and you'll be able to draw perfectly paralleled channels that really help you when you're doing technical analysis, right? So the fact that we did see resistance at the top here, this could be the beginning of more selling to come in the SPX with the price range being at around 2730 where we could potentially sell off to if we do end up still trading in this channel. Of course, tomorrow we could trade up and break above this resistance, which would be a breakout pattern. But if we were to continue this sell off tomorrow, I would say the target price where you guys want to be watching the SPX to go to would be around 2730. And from there, are we going to hold this and continue or rather push up and continue the uptrend and try to get to the top of this channel or are we going to break this support and then actually start a downward pattern from there to the downside right because if we do break this that's a huge break of pattern to the downside and of course like I said 30 seconds ago if we break to the upside tomorrow let's say 
that could issue more green to comp. So keep an eye on this channel. It's going to help you determine where the SPX and honestly, the whole market is going, right? So that's what I'm looking at. In terms of the SPX, keep an eye on that channel and those two resistances that we've been talking about. The Dow Jones here, guys, we can see this one actually broke out of the resistance from a couple of weeks ago in the beginning of December. And we're actually still trading above it with this old resistance acting as a new support level, right? So you guys that you know have been in the trading game for a while, you know basic technical analysis here. Whenever a candlestick, right, whenever a chart, a trend breaks above, Above an old resistance it is now a new support level right so we broke above there we've been holding above this level for a couple of days now hence why it's a new support level with the goal now based on the technicals here being to fill up to the upside here, up to around 26,200, right? That's pretty much what we can draw from these technicals here. If we do end up holding this new support, if we start to push up, you know, the goal target for the Dow in the short term at least is going to be at around $26,240, which is the previous resistance from the beginning of November, guys. So, you know, judging on a longer term basis here, keep an eye on this potential gap fill here for the Dow. Jones, if we go a bit closer here on the 20 day, 20 minute, not 20 minute, 20 day, one hour, guys, I always mess that up sometimes, but we can see the same exact, well, not really the same exact, but a very similar pattern as the SPX, right? Let me just quickly clear this and uh, we'll get a better picture of what's going on here. So we can see if I draw this support trend line or the, uh, the channel very quickly, we can see there, perfect, right? We can see the resistance over the past couple of days at the top of this channel and finally today guys we're seeing the curl to the downside the give right the break to the downside here which could issue more selling to come but remember that longer term support if we do sell more here we're going to end up breaking that longer term support which could trigger even more selling right that's why it's always great and useful to look at multiple um time frames here when you're doing your analysis because you know let's say we do break this level here to the downside that means we're breaking it to the downside on the 20 day chart and the 30 day chart which really could just trigger more selling overall and us to get to the you know the support of this channel right around here with the target being probably around $25,500, $25,600 if we do end up selling down here. And of course, just like the SPX guys, if we break this to the downside, that could trigger more selling. And let's say tomorrow we have a big green day, we break to the upside here, that could trigger even more bullish push for the Dow Jones meaning that we probably will be getting towards the top of this um you know or rather to the next resistance at around 26,200 and eventually if we break that we'll be very very close to testing those all-time highs at the Dow Jones at around 27,000 ish right and just to see you know how far we are from that level we're only about 3-4% from all-time highs right now in the Dow Jones i believe the SPX we're about maybe a little bit more 5% i think yeah, about 5-6% from all-time highs here. And the NASDAQ, might as well just do that now very quickly to see. From all-time highs, we're about 7% off in terms of the NASDAQ. So in terms of the three indices that we cover on this channel, guys, the Dow Jones is the closest to reaching those all-time highs from back in the beginning of October in 2018 before we saw that very vicious sell-off cycle, that correction cycle, um, you know, here in the stock market. So judging on the, uh, you know, the NASDAQ here very quickly before we talk about what I did today in terms of my trading, just like the SPX, guys, we are at a resistance here from the beginning of December at around $7,100. Today, we did not break above that resistance Again, guys, we've been struggling over the past couple of days, but the positive that I do see here on this longer term chart is that we are holding this 50 SMA support in terms of the NASDAQ, and that puts the NASDAQ, guys, at this point in time, right at that support level of the channel. Let me just quickly clear this to make it a little bit uh, more pleasant to the eye because it's kind of confusing all these lines everywhere, but we can see it right here. We can see it very clearly, right, pretty much. If we draw it like that, up here to the top, we can see that we are close to the bottom 
on this 180 SMA support and on this, uh, you know, support of this channel on this particular indice, right? And this could issue potentially a pop up tomorrow. If we do end up going green in terms of the overall markets, we could be pushing up towards the top of this channel. But let's say tomorrow, guys, we have another red day, which again is very possible based on these technicals on the SPX, the Dow, and here on the NASDAQ. We could be breaking these major support levels here, which could trigger more selling to come in the NASDAQ. So based on these technicals, guys, we see a very strong support at $7,100 in the NASDAQ. And if we do break that support, guys, we're going to be testing, you know, about, uh, what, what is it, guys? Or the resistance, rather. If we break the resistance, we're going to be, you know, trying to trade between this gap between $7,100 up to around, let's say, 7,200, which would be the next channel that this could potentially fill if the candlesticks do pop above there. So that's pretty much what the overall indices are looking like today, guys. The market's about to close in five minutes. We do see some push here in the overall indices towards the end of the market. You know, this does typically happen when we see a red day in the beginning of the day. Sometimes towards the end of the day, we do end up giving, you know, pushing back up and gaining some green and momentum into the close. Not too surprised here, but overall, it does seem like we're going to be closing the day today on a red day. So now let's talk about what I ended up trading today, guys, and we'll get into some other stocks and ETFs that I also want to cover in this video. So for all you guys that have been paying attention to the channel right now, I'm currently swing trading three different positions. Well, now two positions because I ended up selling out of Microsoft. We're going to be talking about that now. But for those of you guys that watched my video on Sunday and the past couple of days, I've been talking about these three, Microsoft, J&J, &J, and Caterpillar, ticker symbol CAT. These are all stocks that I've been swing trading, right? And I'm still holding J&J &J and CAT, but Microsoft is honestly the only trade that I made today, and it was pretty much just taking my profits, right? So over the past couple of days, I've been talking about where I've been entering my Microsoft position, right? I got in on Tuesday, right, at about 107.80. We popped up here. We saw the big sell-off yesterday, guys, right? Did not end up selling out of my position because we held above the 50 SMA here on the 180 chart. We talked about that. I ended up adding more money in this particular stock right around here at about 106.80, 106.90 ish on this pullback that we saw. And from there, guys, I was able to bring my average cost down. And we talked about in Sunday's video and in yesterday's video that if we were to break this 50 SMA, that is where I would have cut my losses. But the fact that we held it, we held the higher low trend line here that we do see pretty much the uptrend pattern, I decided to hold my share. So what did I do today, guys? We saw this massive pump up. And typically, whenever we see um, a stock, an ETF, push up like this, especially to a higher high, what we could typically expect is a pullback, a little bit of selling to come from that particular stock, right? Does it always happen? No, right? Does it always happen? No, this could potentially push up again tomorrow to 111. But the fact that we pushed up very quickly this morning and all the way up to, I believe, 109.50, I was already up about 2.1% on my position in a matter of two days and I just wanted to take my profits off the board and see if I can re-enter into this one at a better price point, right? And I know my first initial target sell was at around $111, $110 right at this previous resistance. But again, the fact that we shot up so quick today, I wanted to just play it safe lock in my profits and see if we do end up getting that pullback tomorrow, maybe back down to around 108.50, 108 flat. That would be a very nice spot to see a potential pullback. So let me just quickly show you guys this channel that we are trading in here in terms of MSFT so you guys can get a better understanding of what was going through my mind when I made this trade. So take a look, guys. Take a look at this. The channel right here and we can see with today's pump up 
we're pretty much nearing the top of that channel right at around 109.50, right at around $110. And typically based off this pattern that we do see here, that is a rejection spot for MSFT. So was it really worth it for me to hold tomorrow, risk my profits, hold through tomorrow for an extra like 0.2% gain? Um, you know, I don't think that's really worth it. I think me playing it safe here was a very good idea, right? And I know a bunch of people in the Discord chat were also holding Microsoft and a bunch of them, I do believe, ended up selling out as well. And guys, let's say tomorrow we break above here and we shot up another 1-2%. Sure, I'm missing out on money, right? But... It doesn't matter because I locked in my profits already. 2%, I'm very happy with 2%. And, you know, if it does pull back tomorrow, I can always re-enter and try to get back on this uptrend pattern at a lower price and profit on the upside, right? So that's the whole idea here in terms of um, Microsoft. And that is all I traded today, guys. To be completely honest with you, I did not end up day trading today. We saw the early push up in Microsoft. I didn't take my profits, to be completely honest with you. With you guys more towards the end of the day today i could have took them here but i was holding and kind of debating do i want to ditch my uh, regular plan of selling at 111 take the profits and play it safe or did i want to sell half of my position keep half of the shares for tomorrow or did i just want to sell the whole thing right so that's just what i ended up doing and um uh, let me know down below. What did you guys end up trading today? I would love to know. I always talk to you guys in the comment section. I'm really interested to see what you ended up trading. So that is what I did in terms of Microsoft today. Nothing new in terms of my J&J &J position, guys. We saw a sell-off this morning. It got a little bit towards um, the area that I wanted to sell. If you guys remember in that video, I wanted to sell at about 1% below this level. We actually did dip below this level the previous resistance at around 134, which was a new support. I wanted to sell below about 1% from here. We actually got down to about 1% did not end up selling because we ended up opening into the market holding this 50 SMA as a support which is a good sign that we're continuing the uptrend. So as of right now guys I'm pretty much break even on J&J &J, still holding that initial position um, from a couple of days back and on CAT guys for those of you guys that don't remember I got into CAT uh, yesterday I believe or was it the day before I don't remember guys I trade every freaking day sometimes I just forget when I make my trades but we popped up above here guys. No it was yesterday it definitely was yesterday because yesterday was that three percent move yep there it is the three percent move to the upside right we broke that old resistance that i've been talking about in the previous videos i also talked about this on sunday's video when i called out cat and we broke above there which triggered me to buy i was up about two percent yesterday and now i'm just holding that initial position still up around one percent on the shares with the goal to sell at around 142 so let's see tomorrow guys are we going to end up filling the gap to the upside i'm very interested to see in terms of my cat position so that is what i ended up trading today guys i'm still in these three stocks well not in microsoft anymore i'm still in cat and uh, j and j and now let's talk about some stocks and etfs that i personally see potential in for these next coming days rapid fire so let's get right into it guys so natural gas remember what we've been talking about over these past couple of days well we're reaching that level that we've been talking about and that level is the 270 resistance on natural gas here if we do break that level this could be a breakout move for natural gas we've already got one confirming well rather two or three honestly confirming patterns that we're pushing up or confirming indicators that we're pushing to the upside right now one of those being the double bottom here right double bottom at around 255 the second bottom at around 255 that's a step that we're pushing to the upside for a potential reversal to the upside we broke out of this downward trending channel to the upside that's the second indicator and the third indicator we're seeing here is we're breaking above the moving averages we're seeing the ema break above the 50 sma bullish sign there and we're holding it as a new support level while also making higher highs and higher lows in natural gas so there's about four or five indicators 
just based on this chart alone that we're pushing to the upside here with the final one for a potential breakout being at around 270. So 270 guys, we're at 270 right now, literally. If we do end up pushing and holding this level, you guys is going to be a very good play over these next couple of days, right? You guys is an inverse ETF. It's a bull ETF. It trades based upon natural gas. And whenever natural gas is going up in price, you guys is going up in price as well. And we can see it's up around 5% today, keeping an eye on this one for a potential day trade tomorrow if we do get that pop in natural gas. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of uh, that particular duo there. We saw a big sell-off today, even bigger sell-off in gold, down around $22, down around 2%. If we do break this critical indication support level here on the 50 SMA, we could potentially be selling off more. I was actually looking at this critical support earlier today for uh, the gold futures, which was a previous resistance at around 1330. We were talking about that in the chat. We ended up breaking below that. I'm sure J JDST did very well today. And guys, right now, we're in a very critical spot, right? We broke one of the support levels. Not too good of a sign on a technical basis here. But if we break the 50 SMA, that's going to be another bad, bad thing for gold that could trigger more selling to potentially come. So let's see, JDST, guys, I'm going to be keeping an eye on this one. It was up around 5%. And if gold continues to sell off, <clears throat> JDST is going to open up and be a pretty, pretty solid play over these next couple of days. So one that you guys wanted me to talk about, or rather just one person, I forget if it wasn't on YouTube, Discord, uh, I think it might have been Instagram, I don't know. But if you guys want to follow all those different platforms, they are down below and you could contact me anytime on any of those platforms. I believe the stock was S. TZ. He was asking me if I personally liked, uh, you know, what these technicals were looking like. I don't really like STZ right now at all. For those of you guys that remember, we talked about this stock, I believe, on Monday's video when I was talking about stocks that to watch for a potential breakout, right? We were watching it right here. At the resistance at around 175, it had about two weeks literally of resistance at this level and we were watching for the potential breakout. We never got the breakout that we wanted for it to potentially fill up to 190 here for a nice sweet profit, but we got rejected all the way to the downside now at about 165 and it's honestly looking like a falling knife right now. So I wouldn't really follow this stock or trade it unless we see some upwards push, you know, the beginning of a higher high, higher low staircase to the upside pattern. I wouldn't really touch STZ as of right now. So another one I want to talk about, this one was talked about again, good call out in my opinion is why why this was talked about in the discord chat earlier today by one of our members i forget who it is right now off the top of my head but this one's pattern is looking pretty solid right we got the resistance at around 75 dollars we got the rejection there which opened up a nice sweet margin of profit here and if i could just quickly go back to the trend line drawing so we can see that easier we can see the pullback here is that, I think it's like 5%, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, about 5% here. The pullback from 75 down to around $70. We're holding that 50 SMA very nicely. So now what I want to see is if, is if we're going to start that uptrend and slowly start to fill the gap back up to about $74. And just judging off this one day, one minute, guys, this is some sweet, sweet consolidation right here. Very good sign that we're gearing up for a push to the upside tomorrow on YY with a very solid 5% margin of profit to that resistance. So I'm keeping an eye on YY very closely tomorrow. And honestly, guys, I'm keeping my watch list pretty short as of right now. Really, tomorrow, all I'm watching is potentially adding more money into Microsoft or rebuilding a position, rather, putting money into YYY and JNJ &J potentially. And of course, if JDST is showing good signs pre-market hours, if gold is selling off, that's going to be a very good play as well. But the number one on my list right now, guys, for breakouts is you guys, because we saw that natural gas pattern. It's looking pretty bullish. And we all know when natural gas moves, it moves quick and it moves big, right? Either to the upside or to the downside, right? We've seen 
Natural gas go 30 points, 20 points in a day to the upside. Remember that time when you guys was literally on a 25% tear for day after day after day? Like that stuff is crazy. And that could potentially happen right now. I'm not saying it's going to happen, guys. I can't predict the future. I am not, you know, I'm not a wizard here. But if that does, you know, if we do see some push past 270, you know, you guys could be a pretty, pretty good runner. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this recap. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video, and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you ended up trading today. Let me know if you want me to talk about any stocks. I'll talk about that in the next video. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you all in the next video. If you're in that Discord chat, I'll talk to you there. The link's down below, 100% free. Peace out.